In this lesson, we'll go through the basics of image size, resizing, cropping and straightening of images. It's always good to check that we're starting from the same start point. So if you go up to Window, Workspace, you can check that you're in Essentials. And if it looks any different to what you see here, just go to Reset Essentials. So let's get an image in there. If we go to File, Open, then I'm going to bring in Sally and Mrs. Reed. This 1920s image is a very early example of photobombing, as you can see from this chap that has cheekily stuck his head in the background. So let's get it open and talk about some ways that we could trim this down to get rid of him. So zoom in again, you can either use the trackpad or you can use the magnifying glass and up at the top you have the ability to fit screen. There are a few different ways people crop their images. I'll talk about the way that I used to do it ages ago. Um, which was to use the marquee tool, which is the second one down just underneath move, and a shortcut for it is M. With this method, I can draw a selection around what I want to preserve. So we definitely want the two main figures' heads inside this, and we can just drag it down to the edge of the photograph around about here. When I let go, it just means that we've got a selection of everything that's contained inside that box and whatever's outside of that is not going to be treated by any processes that we apply now. We can crop by going image, crop, up at the top. And there we go, there's our new image. So image, crop, to trim down. And that selection will stay there, and we can move it left and right with your cursors. So you can see over on the corner, we've got a little bit that looks a tiny bit weird from where the original photograph was pasted onto pasteboard and same down at the bottom so I could just shuffle this across by pressing left and right keep the selection and then crop again this method is okay but there is a better way of doing this sort of thing if you do it like this then you can't see the information you're about to discard and you don't get a preview of your decision before you do it yes we've got the result we wanted but we could have used a method that would have allowed us to tweak it a little bit more. So let's try on something else, a different type of method. If we go to File, Open now, and bring in the picture called boopic.jpg, then this is a little picture of my cat the first time I met him, when he was a feral cat in the depths of Wales. What we might want to do is just trim it down to a rough kind of square in the center of this over here. Now we could use this method of marquee selection and cropping but it's a little bit annoying because we might accidentally take certain things we don't want and it's hard to go backwards and forwards between the data that we're missing. So instead if we go down to the fifth tool down, the crop tool, shortcut for this is C on your keyboard, if we select this then you'll see it's bounded the whole image with a similar looking box but this one has handles on it. Now if I start tweaking this and pulling it round you'll see that it doesn't get rid of the image it just darkens out what it's going to crop in a second. If I trim this up from the bottom we can bring this in closer. Do we get to roughly what we want? You see it keeps giving us a preview as we go down of what's going to be missing. Helpfully, it also gives you kind of a rule of thirds display here, which from an artistic perspective is really useful so you know that you can put interesting chunks inside of your different thirds as you're moving around. So we could ensure that Boo's head is in these top two thirds here and his tail comes in at the bottom third around here and he's got kind of looking space on this side to give him purpose and intent. Now, you can, if you were doing this for a specific thing, like let's pretend that this is going to be a wallet photo, up at the top, where our parameters live for whatever tool we're selected on, pick a ratio. So if we knew that this needed to go inside a particular size of photo frame, let's say a square, then we could set that ratio here. And you see it's adjusted the edges, so now we're working with the square. If we start trimming in, it will compensate on the other sides. 
So let's assume that's the case. I'm quite happy with that. We've lost all of this industrial gubbins here and anything that's confusing down here and we've trimmed off this angle that might disorientate people. If we're happy at this point, we can press enter and we will accept the crop. If we're unhappy, we can press escape and we will cancel out of it. I'm happy so I'm going to go ahead and press enter. And there we go. Now we've got a lovely trimmed photo for my wallet. We do have another problem though. All we have here for certain is a square. We don't know how big this is in proportion to the space it needs to occupy inside my wallet. So what we can do is go up to the top where it says image size just here and you can see how big this is in centimeters. Now, it seems quite big however when we print stuff we're probably more likely to do it at a resolution of 300 dots per inch so I'm just going to change that over here to 300 without resampling and the size of photo that I'm looking for for this to fit in my wallet is going to be 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters so if we hit this it will shrink just a tiny bit and you can see up at the top we have our zoom depth here so if we zoom out to 100 you can kind of see where it's going to print this is the size it's going to be we've got a nice clear sharp cropped image scaled to a custom size and a size we know how big it's going to print so you can see the advantage the crop tool has potentially over the marquee tool that we can see some of those things ahead of time it's worth noting at this point what happens when you shrink something down inside Photoshop it needs to make decisions about how it discards some of that information to demonstrate this I'm gonna make this photo even smaller so if I go to image image size and take it off of um, constraints here so we can get even smaller I'm gonna make it something very small like uh, one by one we can still see it's a cat but if we hit OK we'll see the same sort of image but now when we zoom in you will notice beyond a certain point we start to get a grid appear on screen because it's thrown away all the pixels and average them out to result in this smaller image. Each of these is an array of color values holding an absolute color. When viewed really close you can see individual pixels like this. When viewed from a distance it starts to look like it's picture again. The point I'm making is you can make large things smaller quite easily in Photoshop because you're just discarding information. But if you're trying to make small things larger it is much more difficult to do. So keep that in mind when you're scaling and resizing images. You're throwing away information. Is this the right point for you to be doing so in the process? Let's do one more little thing on this um, and open up our final image for this lesson, which is Elysian Lounge 2014. This is a little area I run at uh, a festival a couple of years ago. And I really like this image in terms of just giving an idea of what it's about. So this is one of the setup days and you can see all the colors and some of the decor has gone up and it looks very interesting, but the angle it's been shot at has always bothered me. So it seems a little bit of a Dutch angle to me. You see there's about two centimeters on this side, maybe one centimeter on this side. What I would like to do is rotate it a little bit and straighten it. And we've got a tool for this very purpose. We've had a look at the eyedropper tool in the past, which is just here, the sixth one down. If we click on it, you'll see most of the tools have underneath them a selection of other tools available. With this click down, I can scrub down until we get to the ruler tool just down here. This allows me to do a few things, measure bits of the image, but here it's going to be very useful for helping us straighten it. So I can click on one side, let's say the base of this pole at the marquee, which I would say is about here, and drag it over to the other side, the bottom of the Harris, which I would say is about here. So you can see that that line is not straight, but that's what I would like to be perceived as straight. So if I let go there, we have a line running across here, which runs slightly off of parallel to the bottom. Again, any tool that we have open 
will always change the parameters up at the top of Photoshop. So we can see in this window we've got a little tool here that says straighten layer. If I click this now you'll see the photo will rotate so that that line now becomes parallel to the bottom of your frame. There we go. Much better image. It looks like we're kind of looking at something and we can kind of see the perspective inside of that marquee. It's a little bit more inviting. However, in rotating around here, it's offset against where our initial edge was. So we can see we've got a little bit of transparency down on this side and we've lost a little bit of information on this side. I'm happy to lose that information, but what I don't want is a photograph that isn't rectangular. So we're just going to go over to the crop tool and if we click this it may still be stuck in its old square ratio here which is no longer relevant so instead if we go back to ratio and clear these values of horizontal and vertical then now we should be able to manipulate it just as we did in that first photograph it would make most sense for me to put the right corner in place first and the left corner over here so we're trying to get rid of all of that transparency going on left corner at the bottom and right corner on this side and then just a tiny bit more up at the top and there we go that looks quite nice and again with rule of thirds you can see now it's looking even better we've got the bottom here with kind of uh, the technical crew just hanging around we have some of the inflatable stars above and we have the depths of the night sky where things are kind of cascading off and that looks a lot more balanced to me so I'm quite happy I'm gonna press enter to accept it there we go missed a tiny bit but again very easy to correct it we can just go to the crop tool and actually use the cursors to shuffle around pushing it down with the down key until that disappears just drag top down and press enter and there we go there's my new nice looking balanced straightened photograph and that's it for today very simple one two different methods of cropping stuff with the marquee image crop with the crop tool which is kind of superior and shows you its rule of thirds artistic layout and a little bit of manipulation through straightening things. I would say as a good practice you can just go and have a look through some of the stuff on the website this is photobomb maybe pull a few things off of there and have a go at cropping them down to something which eliminates anything you don't want inside the image.